as in people should log into the machine. Is that what you were asking? We, we, we should start passing them around after the meeting started. Yeah, we should. Oh, you know, yeah. oh, okay. I, I'm just trying to join the meet tech or two on the side. So, have you done that? Oh, you have to join them. Okay, well, that's good. On site two. There we go. That's me. You do the announcement, I'll carry the sheet. Yep. It is 5.30, so we're about to start. This is TSVWG, first session. There we go. Okay. So as you've already seen today, this is the note well. Please pay attention to code of conduct and intellectual property and all the other nice things that are in the note well. So this is a blue sheet. It lets you log in and get a larger room. We were so successful last time we got this wonderful room, but seriously, please scan the QR code or better still just join it using the app. Um, the Secretariat loves us to say this, so we're trying to help our Secretariat. Oh, by the way, who are you, Martin? I'm Martin. I am Martin, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm Gory, and we're, there, we're the chairs, and we would love you to talk to us. Carry on. Do we have a note taker? No, we don't have a note taker. Okay, we still need a note taker. We can't start the meeting without a note taker. I'm Thank sorry. you. Um, Are you going to take them using the notes tool? Yeah. Good, I put the agenda in. Please edit as you need. Then your gentle reminder that working group drafts need reviews. And whenever you can, please review working draft, draft documents um, your reviews are highly appreciated. Do you want to say anything about this one? Uh, yeah, okay. We, so, um, just to be clear, um, when we talk about reviews, you might read the whole document and provide paragraph by paragraph comments, or you might just want to say something about the document you've seen or you're not sure whether it's clear, you're not sure whether it's right. All of this is helpful. We could do reviews collaboratively just by looking at things and noting places where we are uncertain or we think there might be something missing or perhaps even wrong. Um, we occasionally get requests for cross-area review. Um, please also provide that if you can. If you have any expertise or if you have no expertise and just simply wanting to read it and say you don't understand it, that also is good review. So please read and review our documents. And then I wanted to give a quick update on our uh, GitHub status. As announced in San Francisco at the last meeting, we've been um, moving a couple of our working group drafts to, to GitHub. Uh, we've done that now for six or seven drafts now. So we're in a pretty good state. Um, you can now uh, open issues there, open pull requests there. Um, so it's it's all on GitHub. Uh, thanks to all the authors for helping helping with moving them over. We have published exactly zero RFCs in the last period. We have exactly zero RFCs with the RFC editor. We have two documents. Um, with the IESG after IETF last call. So these are waiting document updates and I expect them to progress via our, our AD to an IETF last call. So that's good, two documents in the queue. And we have one document 
with the first working group last call, which is the STTP zero checksum, about to end now. Um, we think we've collected all the comments on this. Michael will do a short update, and we will talk about that progressing to the IESG shortly. We have three drafts um, in the, a different status. They've completed the first working group last call. They are currently with the working group, and they are heading in the short term also to a new working group last call to confirm the final document status, also intending to go to our, our area director. He's going to be busy if we succeed in all this, which is good. No, it is good. We do have remaining work items. Is this my side as well? Okay, good. Uh, we have the L4S operational guidance. We'll hear a little bit from that in this meeting. We have the discussion of DTLS over FCTP. Um, heads up, we have a design team working on this. The design team is trying to set requirements, understand the various options for specification and their implications on implementation. If you feel after you see the design team talk today that this is really something that you're interested in, would like to know more about, please contact the design team or the chairs and we'd happily include you in this process. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get to the design team. Uh, we have multipath DCCP also completing. Um, we have careful resume, intended status PS. We'll have an update on that. We have user ports for experiments, uh, which is currently inactive. And we will wait for a new update from the editor. And we have some related ideas, not on this meeting agenda or um, not particularly up for discussion, although you can always bring things to the working group's attention. Only two of them I wish to highlight. Um, the first is Comcast, uh, previously presented um, a document at low latency deployment design and recommendations. This is proceeding on the independent stream editor track, the ISE track, as we um, discussed previously. That is, it won't be published as a working group document because it's about a particular system and their experience. Although it might be a really good read, and please have a look at that one. Uh, more accurate ECN feedback in TCP and ECN++ are two uh, documents proceeding in other working groups, which you might wish to be aware of because they relate to ECN. Um, other documents are simply other documents which you might wish to read and comment on the list. Okay, we have milestones. Um, some working groups don't really do milestones. We try to do milestones, so we, we speak frequently to our AD to try and keep these as carefully close to reality as we can. And this is the current list of milestones, uh, which were updated. So um, if you want to look at the milestones list, please go to the tracker or do the eyesight test provided. Am I still talking? Okay, good. Um, this is TSVWG agenda session one. Um, this is the plan for this agenda here. We are going to um, review the design team out outputs to try and um, get people to socialize those and see what's been going on. Uh, then we will talk about two drafts, um, careful resume, and then multipath DCCP, both with updates. Next slide. Um, this is session two, where we will do the rest of the work for the working group. This is the two-hour session, and we will look at ECN and L4S, SCTP drafts, uh, UDP transport, and more. Next slide. Individual drafts, we, we will take, we're going to take this draft on MED, and we shall allocate some time to discuss it. Think about uh, whether this is appropriate work for the working group and take whatever feedback you can provide. We have some any other business items. In the any other business items, if you're one of the authors, you send us one slide and we'll show that and then we can talk as a working group about the topic. This is mainly a heads up. Anybody got anything that they think we have missed from the agenda or would like to amend the agenda? Please bash the agenda now.
Hmm. Michael. Just a note on the agenda was SCP over IP. It will be SCP authentication. Yeah, because the sites aren't quite up to date with the actual um, agenda in the proceedings. Good point. Any other attempts to bash the agenda or the contributions that we haven't noted? We shall proceed. Thank you ever so much. The design team is up. Would you like to try and use this? Left and right? Mm. That's it. Yeah, my name is Michael Tuxen. Um I'm the editor of the slides and the corresponding draft. Um, and I'm reporting about the results of the um, design group, which somehow, can someone? I can drive the slides. That's perfect, okay. next slide. Well, while we're driving the slides, we should say the design team was formed with the intention of just setting requirements and looking at the implementation path. Uh, to report at this meeting, we, um, expect this design team to produce results which are shared with the working group. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, so this is the, the list of participants. Um, I'm not going through the list, but um, there were participants from Ericsson and from Nokia to vendors which might be um, affected by, by the solution. Um, there were people with a security background. There were people with um, SCTP implementation background. So it's a it's a mixture of um, um, people having different areas of knowledge. Next slide. So to provide some context, we are talking about securing um, SCTP-based communication, which is used in uh, signaling networks. That's already done now. And um, right now, the they are mostly secured by using IPsec. So you run SCTP over IPsec tunnels, and that's uh, why DTLS over SCTP or, or any other solution is, is not used a lot right now. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, the direction in the deployment is going to use um, um, systems in the cloud, and there the, the usage of IPsec is more difficult, so the, the goal is to use an end-to-end -end, end security. And that's why something like DTLS over SCTP is um, being discussed or uh, other similar solutions. Um, we are focusing on the requirements from 3GPP. We are not limiting us to these requirements. So where it's possible, we, we try to be generic, but the focus is what's needed by 3GPP. Next slide. So we structured these requirements a bit in generic requirements, for example. Um, one is that uh, no protocol mechanism should limit uh, the uh, availability of communication or result in message loss, which means um, uh, when you look at um, DTLS over SCTP, there is a uh, when you do rekeying, there is some special handling where you have to drain the network such, such that during that period, your communication is limited and that, that is to be avoided. The other situation is um, you have uh, send buffers and receive buffers in implementations, and the size of these buffers should not limit the maximum max message size. So message sizes are an issue. Um, Right now, if you use DTLS over SCTP, you are limited by about, I think, 16K. Um, so, and this limit is already too small. So some of, something about half of a megabyte is currently being in use. Um, and so this message size should not limit 
future deployment of these solutions. So it should, if possible, um, support unlimited message sizes if we have to put up a limit uh, due to some limitations. Um, the agreement was that one gigabyte is, is enough. So if, if we need some limit. Next slide. Functional requirements from SCTP are the ones which are covered in the base specification like audit reliable, reliable transmission of user messages. So um, there is right now no explicit requirement for partial reliability or unordered delivery, but um, multiple streams with order delivery. Um, Multi-homing is required, but not uh, the dynamic address reconfiguration, so no ISConf stuff is required. You know when you set up the association, you know the set of IP addresses you will use for the whole lifetime. And the restart procedure um, is to be supported. So if one site goes away and comes again with the same endpoint information, this must be detected by the peer and uh, they need to start the um, communication right away. Yeah, all this stuff is in the base spec, so that's nothing special. Uh, the parameterization is quite, uh, quite easy. Uh, right now, at least two streams need to be supported. So one is not enough. We need multiple streams, but right now two is what is used. Next slide. Implementation considerations, user message sizes must not be limited by protocol implementation. This basically means uh, that you, in the API, you need to be able to re receive messages larger, larger than the receive buffer, which is required by an SCTP implementation, which is called partial delivery. Uh, it's an optional feature to have the same on the sender side. And uh, for, for the aspect of kernel implementations, this, is fe this feature is supported by previous view, but currently not supported by le the Linux kernel implementation. Um, and there is a kind of weak statement that uh, for some participants, it's preferable to be able to use open source kernel implementations. So they, they don't want to use specific uh, implementations, but what is running on the operating system they are using, that's what they want to use. Next slide. Security requirements. Um, we, uh, so SCDP protects against off-path attackers, but not against on-path attackers at all. With this security solution, um, an on-path attacker um, being able to replay messages, insert messages, modify messages has to be considered. And uh, this means that such an attacker should not be able to um, affect the user messages being delivered. So he can't inject messages or uh, uh, change the order of messages being delivered, something like that. An on-path attacker can always drop messages, and this might result into loss of the uh, association, but you can't do anything against that. So that's what we have to live with. We need neutral, neutral uh, authentication, privacy, and integri integrity for user data as normally required. Um, for long living uh, sessions, we have some requirements, um, especially periodic reauthentication, uh, and uh, in particular, certificate upgrades, uh, certificate updates have to be uh, allowed during that reauthentication. And it must be possible to run Diffie-Hellman once an hour or every 100 gigabytes. So um, on a, depending on your rate, um, uh, it's a time limit or it's a volume limit. And the availability, um, uh, so replay or injection must not affect the availability of an association, which means an on-path attacker doing this um, can't affect the association. In particular, and an, an attacker which, who's able to perform an SCP restart uh, must not be able to affect the communication, which means an attacker should not be able to perform the restart, take over the SCP association, and then fail the uh, crypto handshake because he doesn't know the, uh, the keys. So that would mean he could take over the, the he could, um, 
uh, terminate the, the original communication. That should not be possible. Next slide. Yeah, we have implementation considerations. So there is a focus on DTLS 1.3, meaning if we can um, solve the problem using, uh, or if the problem can be solved by using DTLS 1.3, that's fine. Um, if it turns out that this is not possible, we might reconsider this. Um, and some participants um, prefer to use unmodified DTLS implementations. So this is kind of, a, they are not tied to a particular DTLS implementation. They are willing to choose it based on some features supported or not, but they don't want to modify DTLS implementation. So we have some people focusing on taking an off-the-shelf SCTP stack in the kernel, some of them wanting an unmodified DTLS implementation. That's the requirements which we agreed on. Um, and that agreement happened right before the for the IETF, so we were not able to look into the potential solutions or discuss the, the suggestions which are right now on the table. I guess we are open for questions or comments. Tiru uh, Nokia. Today we were discussing in the TLS working group that uh, only TLS 1 1.2 will be frozen. There won't be any extensions, but uh, for DTLS 1.2, extensions will be allowed. Thank you. Any further comments? Then I would like to uh, use the, the time here. Um, people of this uh, design team, which are here, could we meet at the end of the, the session and see if we can meet here, find a day to meet here at the IETF? Thank you. Could I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Um, what happens if somebody was interested in what they were told now and they would like to join this initiative to design it? I'm happy that they are joining. Okay. Um, the second one, um, I'll let Magnus ask his question and then I'll ask at the end. <laughs> so, Magnus Westland, I it wasn't a question, more a comment, just saying that, I mean, as we see steps forward here is to at least discuss how we get towards a decision. And, and I hope that we basically can rescope the design team to at least try to say, how do we get into the next step, uh, etc. and trying to, because as I see it, we need to be able to at least have a direction for the solution. In, in a reasonable time frame, and I hope it's no longer than by the March meeting. So, what an excellent prompt! That was my point two. Uh, so, point two of the thing was the original scope of the design team was to report back at this meeting to produce a list of requirements. We may already have that. Um, could you please complete that list of requirements, preferably at this meeting? Um, if there's anything to be added, please add it and then write it down and give it to us. I would imagine that it would be really, really useful to, to take those requirements, the various implementation considerations you have, and to see if you can suggest a way forward for the working group. Only a suggestion, but if we have a starting point, we will probably operate much faster to try and meet that goal that Magnus set. Does that seem reasonable to extend the design team for another two meetings to try and come up with some suggestions for how to take this forward. Yeah, that does make sense. Um, just to be clear, if, if, no, if no new participants show up, I think we are done with the requirements and the focus would be on uh, finding a way forward. So even the meet, I, I guess even the meet, I mean, I'm looking at Magnus, so I think the idea for meeting at this IETF is not to complete or add any requirements, but to find a way forward. Uh, yes, uh, at least in my mind, it would be to try to go forward and, and at least plan how we would arrive at within the one or two additional meetings, but uh, yes. Uh, yes, so that we are, we're not going to exclude anybody, we'd like to invite 
if someone can't make it, at least we will set up for the future meetings and have a bit of a work plan and maybe have some other discussion we can have about how do we get towards making a choice. Yes, I agree. Okay, please do that. Please report back by the end of the year, formally to the whole working group. Okay, Good we will luck. use the internet draft we have published now to, to add the stuff and publish that by the end of the year. Yes. Um, I have some uh, question uh, here about, uh, now sure you have already considered some specific situation for 3GPP um, satellite uh, <coughs> satellite uh, communication part. And then since uh, the current one is going to put the, the base station on board satellite, that means the, the end gap that that protocol will be through some satellite links from on board to the on ground or even the ISL part. That will introduce at least on my, you know, my view, one is the dynamics, the link will be, you know, flexible down up. The other part is the slow latency on the satellite link. So for the SATP, have you ever considered this type of scenario? Thank you. Um, so you are asking about running SCTP over satellite links? Because uh, the Gino B will be on board satellite and the 5GC will on the ground. That one is using the N gap. N gap is using SCTP. So. so I have not worked on this, and this, this group has also not worked on this. This group is more focused on the functional part of running some security protocol in combination with SCTP, and I would say mostly not affecting the performance of SCTP. So whatever performance aspects you have, they should apply to SCTP the same as to running SCTP with this security stuff. Yeah. Uh, Magnus, I mean, if you have some pointed to the 3DPP documents where if how far they come, etc., cetera, on, on those requirements, it would be good, but I think SCTP is robust for internet usage, etc. So I don't think expect this to be a particular significant problem from the latency, etc., on, on this type of deployment. So, so I mean, the, the the base RFC has parameter settings for timers and such things, which are for the big eye internet. And as far as I know, in the signaling networks, these values are not used. They use particular timer values um, for their use case. And you might need to use specific values for your satellite link, but without knowing the parameters of the satellite link, I can't comment yeah, on that. Just try to introduce some of uh, the, the general uh, thoughts thinking a lot about the, the link itself, not the stable when compared with the terrestrial link. So that is something. I, I, would, I, mean, I would assume that you can run SCTP in a well-parameterized way over such a link. If you want to develop that, uh, if there are any security implications, please contribute to the design team. If there are any more general considerations of SCTP or experience of using SCTP in that environment, then please bring it to the working group's attention. We'll be interested. Yep. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the update. And next is the careful resumption of condition control state. We had a slight um, update to the agenda, which we didn't announce. We had a hackathon activity relating to one of our drafts. So this draft had some hackathon activity. Um, I hope it's always interesting to know what's going on at the hackathon. Uh, please be brief, but please tell us, Rafalo. Oh, yes. Um, there was uh, yesterday a uh, uh, hackathon that this, uh, this presentation could be uh, presented for various reasons. And uh, I think it deserves a mention uh, now. So if uh, we, you will allow, I will use a couple of minutes just to uh, acknowledge that. So next slide. So effectively what we uh, have done yesterday at the hackathon was to finalize uh, the implementation of careful resume in uh, Quiche, uh, Quick Quiche, uh, 
um, by Anna Costura, uh, that uh, also at the University of Aberdeen. And uh, here, for example, you can see uh, the uh, performance graph that we have uh, done. Effectively, this careful resume is a, is a method to update the congestion window as startup. And in this graph, you can see the congestion window versus time in one case where effectively careful resume is disabled and therefore we have uh, typically slow start uh, behavior in uh, the, the concentration grows exponentially uh, through time and uh, when we start uh, uh, enable careful resume we have this jump and the concentration window increase uh, it, it can uh, uh, becomes as large as the um, the pipe so we can reuse the pipe uh, um, effectively. And uh, it's also the vertical band that you see, red, uh, green, and uh, uh, blue, are the various phases that careful resume will traverse. So this, uh, we have done this experiment, so I, I, I worked. Um, next slide, should be another slide, where we, uh, uh, we also done some interoperability tests, and I would like to acknowledge as we work from Fastly, where we have uh, a implementation of uh, careful resume in Quickly. So we have used uh, the QLog uh, support in CR just to check that uh, uh, implementation uh, can talk to each other. So we have uh, different uh, uh, client and server. We are trying with different client server on and by end metrics. Uh, Kish versus Kish, Kish versus Quickly, Fast, uh, Quickly versus Kish. Pico quick and uh, quickly. So uh, effectively, we, 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 are, we are interested to check this because uh, different implementation can use uh, uh, acknowledgement strategy that are different. So with different way of sending ACK frames. Uh, and uh, we would like, we wanted to test that this uh, work as intended then they do. So uh, this has been a success. So next. So uh, effectively, we, we are not uh, completed with this. So we need uh, to do uh, a little bit more test. We need to validate the, uh, this, uh, uh, this variance implementation. We are mostly focused uh, in Aberdeen uh, to, uh, in Kish. And uh, uh, we are trying to get some, uh, uh, some um, knowledge from what we have uh, uh, what are these tests? What uh, can tell about uh, uh, how to uh, progress with this uh, this graph? So that's effectively acknowledging the uh, the uh, the work that has been done in the hackathon. Anybody? Any questions? Just proceed with this talk then, Rafael. Thank you for the update. Okay, so. Uh, what I would like to uh, start uh, what is uh, about uh, um, a little bit of um, uh, re review what uh, careful resume is and uh, why we use it. Next slide. So it's a mechanism to start up a, a transport connection. So it doesn't apply to any specific uh, uh, protocol. It may be applied to TCP or Quick or other transport protocols. So it's a method to start up and to reuse the uh, capacity uh, ba based on uh, previous uh, uh, the reuse of the same path. So we have a method to uh, store the characteristic of the path. And in particular, we clarify that we use two, uh, two parameters that are the RTT and the uh, capacity as uh, um, uh, measured in, uh, in packets so, or in BDP effectively. Uh, and uh, um, this method is not uh, uh, replacing the method uh, that uh, uh, are typically used. It doesn't replace uh, slow start, uh, for example, in Reno. It doesn't replace uh, I start plus plus uh, as a modification of cubic. So uh, instead, it's, a, it's uh, a method that is additional to these methods. And uh, what it wants to do is to uh, start as fast as possible by reusing the previous parameter. So going, uh, reusing uh, uh, the uh, 
good fraction of the BDP that was already been used before in pre by previous connections. So here we are looking really at connections that have very large uh, BDP bandwidth delay protocols, so on the uh, uh, order of uh, megabytes. So for example, one of our scenarios is the satellite link where you can have uh, several uh, megabytes. And uh, if you start really from the initial window of 10 packets, it will be only 15 kilobytes. So it will take uh, uh, a certain number of round trips before using the capacity effectively. So uh, instead, uh, we uh, try to jump directly at the level where the, 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 the capacity can be used effectively. So reuse uh, the parameter for pass connection is uh, not uh, um, a sender side only modification uh, in the sense that uh, there may be the receiver involved. And uh, uh, one of the options in the draft is to store the parameters at the receiver, but effectively it's the sender that uh, uh, set the requirements for capacity utilization. And uh, it's not only a jump, but also a method to, uh, if things go wrong, and uh, for example, I'm not restarting on the same link, for some reason there is a switch of path, et cetera, uh, going to the same destination, uh, then we implemented also a response, a safe response that we call a safe retreat that uh, try to uh, undo the, the jump and try to have the least impact possible on the, uh, on, on the transfer. So since the last uh, uh, um, update of the draft, since the last version, we have uh, done this experiment and uh, we have also received some feedback. And so these uh, modifications are really a reflection of this. So our first uh, uh, modification is uh, concerned the data limited connections. So connection that don't have really much data to send. And this may happen, for example, at the beginning of a connection, the uh, sender may have to exchange some data. It can always happen that uh, it doesn't have the bulk of data immediately. So several round trip can pass in a, this data limited connection. And uh, it, uh, it doesn't jump immediately. It waits until uh, the sender has, is ready to send the bulk of data. So uh, this has, has to be implemented because, uh, of course, if uh, uh, initially the, the draft uh, all this plane that this has to be concluded in one round trip, instead of now we consider a number of round trip and we uh, de define the exact point where the jump happens. Effectively, this happens when the um, application has an amount of data to send that is equivalent to the, or is at least equivalent to the congestion window at that point. So it will start a new uh, phase of transmission that we call uh, unvalidated phase, and uh, it starts going much rapidly. So. Uh, however, what uh, I want to point out here is that uh, the congestion window of, uh, uh, during the reconnaissance phase, which is the first phase where uh, is a, I'm in data limited condition, may increase or may remain the same. There are different uh, implementation of uh, a transport workload if the, is pos if it's, uh, the congestion window of, uh, is decided to stay uh, constant, for example, maintaining uh, the initial window then uh, uh, also this protocol doesn't affect the congestion window effectively, or it might increase. And uh, in this case, uh, the condition remains. So it's the, it's the same. As soon as the uh, application has to uh, exceed the amount of bandwidth, the amount of uh, uh, data that the, the congestion window will allow, that's the point where it's triggered. Uh, so uh, then also when the jump is completed, after that, the, uh, a normal phase resume, and also in this case, the growth of the congestion window can be uh, determined effectively by the underlying congestion control. And if, for example, uh, is uh, uh, cubic is used, there is I star plus uh, plus, which can have a good in interaction with our protocol because it would actually uh, limit the amount of band uh, data that is uh, sent over the link. Next slide. 
So another modification with respect to the uh, last update uh, is uh, uh, the clarification that the unvalidated phase, which is the phase where the high speed is uh, triggered and uh, uh, the bandwidth is used, is reused, uh, has been split into phase, which we call unvalidated and validating. And the reason is that uh, we send this train of data, we send this uh, um, bunch of packet uh, uh, paste uh, uh, over the link, and uh, we wait for acknowledgments. So uh, what we want really is that the entire train is acknowledged, not only the beginning. And if we li will limit this to one round trip, probably we will receive uh, only uh, very few acts because uh, we receive an, an acknowledgement uh, after one round trip, if, if the data will be sent in a block, then if it will be received effectively in one round trip. But because uh, we use pacing and we aim at using a, a good fraction of the uh, round trip time, then also the acknowledgement are expected to be received uh, with a delay. So we effectively introduce a, another phase, validating phase where we uh, wait for all the acknowledgement. And for, uh, to do this, so we need to take the markers of where the uh, data is uh, uh, started and when it's uh, uh, completed. And also we clarify that, that these are additional packets that are unvalidated with respect to the one that we already sent. So for example, if the congestion window have grown up to a fraction of the BDP because uh, uh, during the reconnaissance uh, we grow the congestion window, then the, the data that counts towards uh, the uh, validating is uh, only the extra packet that have been sent. Next. So one point is that uh, effectively we need to use a different marker in the sequence of packets sent uh, to with respect, so we can we can have an implementation that counts in bytes or an implementation that counts in packet depending on the uh, transport protocol that is applied. So uh, finally, another uh, things to mention uh, in this uh, in this version of the draft is the use of uh, pipe estimation. Uh, and this apply to what we call safe retreat. So when uh, we send uh, uh, significant data, but uh, because the, 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 the path has changed or there has been a restriction or something has changed in the network, so we receive uh, uh, the, the things go wrong and the, there are lots of packet losses. So here, when we talk about, um, it may be significant packet losses, uh, and we think many more packet losses that uh, it will usually have in the internet. So uh, we uh, would like to support things like 90%, 95% of packet losses. So in this case, uh, uh, we have uh, only a few acts and uh, we use the acts to try to estimate how much has, uh, has passed. So we actually use also the acts that we receive to have uh, some knowledge about uh, what the capacity was. And uh, so we use, uh, we, we estimate the acts. One way is simply to count the acts. For example, if I don't have uh, any other uh, selective acknowledgement information, and the only things I can do are just counting the acts. Or uh, if uh, um, we have uh, uh, selective acknowledgement in TCP, or for example, in Quick, we have act frames that are effectively selecting acknowledgement, we can if discriminate what packet have been sent. So we have, uh, uh, describe a method using the scoreboard to sort of uh, um, uh, determine what, what are the packets that have effectively left the, 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 the network and reach the receiver. So this is uh, uh, um, this uh, technique, for example, is already implemented in a Linux kernel, and uh, it's uh, uh, there is a variable in kernel for. 514, which is called delivered, that uses the scoreboard in that way. So that's, that means that uh, this is modification can be implemented. So next slide. So the, after that, when we uh, use the pipe sizes, then you reuse to reset the congestion window, and we use half of the pipe size. So we have done some experiment. We have implemented the uh, uh, careful resume in TCP and in simulation in NS3. Uh, we have done a modification for cubic 
and uh, so we have a little bit of experience with TCP with this uh, with this uh, modification and uh, really uh, the TCP is a little bit more tricky than quick uh, because uh, effectively uh, TCP has the concept of packet need to be recovered so if, if I have a, a massive amount of packet loss after that the window has increased uh, significantly if the, the path has changed and I have only few acts uh, so what happened is that uh, yes I can reset the congestion window but then I still need to recover uh, many packets. So uh, what we found really is that the recovery period may uh, be prolonged and this may have some implication because uh, for example in Linux uh, TCP uh, the congestion window cannot grow during the recovery. There is effectively a phase in the uh, final state machine of the uh, the, uh, the selective acknowledgement that uh, avoid the increase of the congestion window in that phase. So it, effectively, the congestion window will be stuck at a low uh, level for a long period of time. So uh, that uh, uh, doesn't mean that cannot be applied to TCP. It means that uh, uh, the performance cannot be, in this particular case, as good as what we could have in Quick. Uh, so in quick, there isn't this problem because uh, uh, the, there isn't effectively a recovery. It's the application that decides what to resend and the, re, uh, re, uh, the, the act of uh, reducing the congestion window is effectively a single act. And then uh, if the uh, quick basically mimic uh, TCP for one round trip, so the recovery can only last one round trip and not uh, several round trip as must be done in TCP. So what we are doing is just uh, that uh, at this point we are uh, continuing uh, implemented in Quick. So we have received feedback from Kazoo and uh, Neil. That have, we, we actually um, modify the draft uh, to respond to that. We, we still are in the process of re responding to their uh, to their um, criticism, but um, uh, we. We are telling you your input now. If uh, you have question, uh, happy to respond about this, uh, uh, this test that we've done and uh, the update of this. Thank you for the talk. Questions, please. Michael Jackson, so you said at the beginning that you are storing um, values like RTT and the bandwidth delay product. So for how long do you store this or use this? Okay, so the, the, uh, at the moment the draft doesn't say this, uh, but um, um, we are thinking about uh, in the range of few minutes. Uh, so that uh, is something that uh, happens uh, what, what, when the the, the connection is restarted, for example, for um, a, a type of traffic that require, for example, uh, disconnecting and reconnecting to the same server. So in a short period of time, uh, we, we think that the condition of not change. So this five minus can be, uh, for example, uh, uh, seen in other, uh, in, in other uh, transport protocols. So it's something that uh, we can refer to other protocols. Um, but still, we have, it's something that we, we have to think about and we have to find the right argument for that. Other comments on that topic, other people? I saw Christian in line. Did you remove yourself? Well, uh, yes, and, and then I, I remove myself. I, I can. Well, w what I wanted to say is that I, I am uh, in the implementation Pico Quick. Uh, I have uh, tried two different options. One is to take the full uh, BDP uh, and go straight to the final value, and I found that a bit dangerous because I mean you never know what could happen. And the other way, when I'm still in slow start, is just to stack, increase the window to half the BDP. 
which means that it will take one round trip to grow to the full BDP, but also it will be safer if uh, the conditions have changed. That's what I, I'm doing. Yes, so that's, uh, so the, 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 the alpha of the BDP is uh, uh, um, uh, parameter that we have chosen because, uh, uh, yes. well, it's a safe uh, uh, parameter in the sense that uh, uh, we don't want to reuse the old capacity. There may be other connection in, in progress. And uh, so alpha is to avoid uh, that disruption that will happen if uh, you take all the capacity, mm -hmm. but uh, is, the link is already congested. So we are a little bit more conservative and we use alpha of the band. But uh, we would, uh, well, basically this uses one round trip to grow back to the full capacity. We have two more people in line, and we have about two more minutes, so one minute each, please. Yes, I would like to repeat the observation I made a couple of IETFs ago, that this particular parameter is one that ideally you would actually learn from the network, from the history of how previous restarts went, whether or not one half was needlessly low or whether or not one half was dangerously high. As I'm thinking some sort of ML model for that specific parameter. Thanks, Matt. So, yes. Okay, Kazuho. Right, so for what's us in our implementation, we do full bandwidth with pacing grade of 1x, and it did seem to work well, though I would point out that in the current set of draft, uh, we use serum and previous RTT for estimating the bandwidth, and that means that we can overestimate by 2x. And considering that, I tend to agree that within the draft, it makes sense to say that half is the correct value. Okay, some feedback, some topics still to solve, but nice to see running code going along with that. Uh, please continue the effort to do running code. Please continue discussion on the list and more people, please help develop this spec. Thank you, Raffalo. Next side deck will be multipath DCCP. With Martin, Marcus, sorry. Martin's got the sides. Marcus is doing the talk. Go ahead, Marcus. Hi, good evening. My name is Marcus Arment. I'm here on behalf of the authors of the multipath DCCP draft to give you an update on the status. So before this meeting, we published version 11. Um, and this time we focused on language improvements. Um, a big thanks to Gori who provided a pull request, um, which fixed a lot of language errors, or as I said, Im improved the language um, throughout the whole document. And uh, we also adopted a pull request which explains or gives some guidance when the sequence number space within the multipass uh, sequence sub option is exhausted. Uh, that fixed one of the issues Olivier raised in his, re in his review. And we are now making progress to fix the last issues we have in the issue tracker. So our idea is to fix this until end of the year and publish all the fixes in the new version 12, so that we hopefully then are ready for the working group last call if no new issues uh, will appear in the issue tracker. So that is more or less the status and now. Any questions? While we're forming a queue, I have a question regarding the code. You had a running code you've done in hackathons is this still close to what's in the document? Uh, sorry? You, you showed running code in previous hackathons for this um, spec. Is that code still relevant to the latest version of the spec? Still it is. Um, we plan to modify a little bit the handshaking procedure as we discussed uh, in last IETF. So that requires some changes in, in, the, in the code and the open source code. Um, so we also follow this to keep this aligned. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, any questions from anybody? If there's a lack of questions and you're clearing issues, then I suspect you will be proceeding to a working group last call in the start of the year by the looks of it. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you. Which brings us to the end of our agenda, doesn't it? Excellent. So we have reached the end of our agenda. We would love you to come back for a second helping. Um, we will do all the other stuff in the meeting on Thursday. If you have any questions, please come and talk to us. Please comment on the list. Have a good evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you.